Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and this week we're looking at Ryzen-based laptops that cost less than $500. Today we've got one that's under $400 from Lenovo. This is the IdeaPad 330S, and it has one of those AMD R5 2500U processors inside. And the reason why you should care about these chips is because they deliver a lot of performance for the low price tag. And we're going to explore what this one can do in just a second. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Like the other ones we're looking at, this is a 15-inch laptop with a 1080p resolution. The display looks good, but like the others, it's a bit on the dim side, but that's typically what you get uh, out of one of these lower cost laptops, but it's more than fine for basic usage. I like the resolution. It's nice to have a 1080p display at 15 inches. Movies look good, text and photos look nice and sharp. And overall, it's a good display for the money, so no complaints there. Now inside, it's got the AMD Ryzen R5 2500U processor. Now the last laptop we looked at was the Asus VivoBook that had the 3500U chip. That one should be faster than this one, but as you'll see, this one performs just as nicely as the other one does, and it shouldn't. Um, so it looks like uh, the other one may have uh, been a little bit constrained in its performance because it did have the more powerful processor. Now we're going to get a little technical here for a minute, but we have to to kind of explain some stuff. Uh, inside, it's got 8 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. And if you're just looking to buy a computer, this thing is ready to go out of the box. You don't need to change anything or upgrade anything to get the full performance. And the reason is, is that the RAM is running in dual channel configuration, which is what these AMD chips require for the best graphics performance. Uh, we have looked at AMD laptops that often only come with one stick of RAM installed and you have to open it up and put another stick in. This one, like all the other ones we're looking at this week, is ready to go at full blast when you buy it. But if you wanted to upgrade the RAM, you're gonna have some difficulties because it has one four gigabyte module soldered onto the motherboard and the other one is socketed. So you could take out the four gigabyte module that's accessible to you and put in an eight for a total of 12, but uh, you will be taking the laptop out of its dual channel mode because you're not running with a matched pair. So just keep that in mind. If you expand the RAM, you might see a performance decline. So you're probably gonna wanna stick with the eight gigs that it comes with. Uh, it has 256 gigabytes of onboard storage with an NVMe SSD. You can take that out and put in a larger one if you want. And there's also room to add in a SATA hard drive. Uh, and you can pop that in and have two hard drives going at the same time. That SATA drive can be a spinning drive, a mechanical drive, or an SSD. So it's got a decent amount of expandability like all the others we've looked at this week. And that's what's been interesting about these low-cost laptops. I see more upgradeability on these than I do on the more expensive ones out there. So you do have some ability to make some upgrades to this. One more technical gotcha here, though, is that uh, this one only has one gigabyte of shared video memory available. The Asus that we looked at a couple of days ago has two gigabytes available. Now for basic usage, this is no big deal, but if you're running a video editing application or some other app that requires more video memory to be available for it to use, that might be problematic. You can't change the amount of shared RAM at the time I'm recording this video. We did try and figure out a way to do it, but it's not possible at the moment. Uh, so you are locked in with that one gigabyte of shared video RAM, and that could be limiting for some folks looking to do more graphically intensive applications. Now the weight on this one is 4.12 pounds. That is 1.87 kilograms. It feels pretty nice. It's got a nice solid build to it. I like the fact that the display hinge goes all the way back here. That's good for finding the right screen position, but it's also good if you've got kids around that tend to be a little too overzealous in their laptop opening. Uh, this will certainly prevent some damage over ones that don't go back this far. And it was also cool to see that although the laptop is mostly plastic, the top of the lid here is aluminum. Uh, the keyboard is great on this one. It is not backlit like some of the other ones are, 
but I like the size of the keys and how it feels to type on it. Really nice travel to the keys. They push down quite far, so you get a good amount of tactile feel. It feels very similar to the keyboards that Lenovo puts on their more expensive laptops, so that's good. You got a full number pad here on the side. Uh, the number keys are a bit smaller than their other key equivalents on the keyboard here, but I think you can get used to it pretty quick. And I like that there's a big zero key, which is what a lot of us number crunchers are used to. So that is good. Uh, you've got a trackpad here that is nicer than what we saw on the Asus, a little less spongy, uh, very accurate, good stuff all around here on a sub $400 laptop for input. Uh, on ports, you've got a couple to talk about. We're Power port here is right there. You can plug your power adapter in there. Quite a small power adapter, too, that goes with it, so nothing too bulky to travel with. HDMI is outputted here to an external display. USB 3 is right here for plugging in USB devices. You have a USB Type-C connector next to it, but this is not a display output or a power input connector. It is strictly USB data devices that will work with that USB-C port. Over here, you've got a headphone microphone jack, and then on the other side, uh, we have an SD card reader. Uh, the problem, though, is that the SD card will be sticking out quite far here, as you can see, so you're not going to get that card traveling with you, but you do have the reader built in. You have another USB 3 port here, and you have a Kensington lock to lock the laptop down on a desk. Uh, speakers are downward firing, not the best sounding things out there. I wouldn't expect them to sound all that great for the price point, but they're loud and somewhat decent stereo separation. But of course, you'll probably want to plug in some wired headphones or Bluetooth headphones for better audio on there. Battery life is about the same as what we've seen on other Ryzen laptops at this price point. Not great, around five or six hours or so, less if you're going to be really hitting the graphics system with games and video editing and that sort of thing. So don't plan on all day battery life here, uh, but that's often the trade-off you make with a low cost device. So let's move on now to performance. We've got a 1080p 60 video running here on my YouTube channel. Everything is running just fine. We're not seeing any drop frames here. So I think from the standpoint of Netflix and other things, it should be a good experience for you there. Now, as far as the basics go, like web browsing, word processing, and spreadsheets and whatnot, you shouldn't have any issues here. I will load up the nasa.gov homepage as an example, and you can see just how fast everything kind of springs up. Uh, it's connected right now to my AC wireless network, and all of the pages here are rendering very quickly on this multimedia-rich site. I think you'll have no problems, and you'll probably be surprised by how nicely everything just runs on here, given the low price point. We also ran the browserbench.org speedometer web benchmark test, and there we got a score of 87.8 on version 1.0 of that test and 47.1 on version 2.0. Uh, that doesn't make it as fast as an Intel i5 or i7 based machine, at least for that test, but for what you're going to experience here, it's fine. It's nice and quick, and everything that you're trying to get done will get done for a lower price point. Now on that benchmark, you're probably noticing that this Lenovo is performing a little bit better than the Asus we looked at a couple of days ago that presumably has a more powerful processor. And that theme kind of continued as we went into some of the gaming tests that we run. Uh, so we're gonna start off with GTA 5. We're running it at 1080p at the lowest settings. And it ran great on here, just like it did on the Asus, but it did run a little better here on the Lenovo. We were seeing the laptop get into the mid-30s for frame rate more often than we did on the Asus. Again, not something you might notice throughout the course of playing the game, but something if you're tracking the frames per second, you'll probably pick up on. So it did pretty well there, although we did get a warning from GTA about the fact that we were running low on video memory when we set up those 1080p low settings. So just be aware of that. You might have some glitches or some other things in games that are less forgiving on the video memory due to that limitation we talked about a little bit earlier. Next up is Rocket League. We were running that at 1080p low settings. Uh, we were getting about 50 to 60 frames per second there, so it ran really nice, but of course didn't look that great. Uh, you could turn up the image quality a bit and get down to around the 30 frames per second territory, but you can keep it at 1080p just with that frame rate dip there, so not bad. Fortnite, 30 to 40 frames per second, 1080p at low settings. Uh, now, when you do that setting on Fortnite, it's actually rendering the game at around 720p and kind of upscaling it, but nonetheless, it is a playable Fortnite experience. 
We also ran the new version of Doom. At 1080p, it wasn't very playable, kind of the high 20s or so. When we turned the resolution down to 720p, we were seeing about 50 frames per second. Uh, so overall, you can get gaming performance out of this that you won't be able to get out of a $400 or less Intel machine. And that's what's so great about these Ryzen processors. Really good playable games. They may not always look the best, but you can get a nice playable frame rate out of this low cost budget device. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate benchmark test, we got a score of 11,521. Uh, that puts this one pretty much on the same footing as the Asus we looked at which should be running faster with its 3500U processor, but isn't. Uh, so we'll try to get some more 3500U machines in in the weeks to come here to see what we should be getting. I also wanted to draw your attention to a more expensive Intel device, namely the Yoga 920 that we looked at a little while ago. Check out the difference in graphics scores between this one, which is about 400 bucks or less, and that much more expensive Yoga with the i7. It's much, much faster graphically and that's because these AMD chips are tuned for graphics and you're getting that performance that you're not going to get on something more expensive. Great stuff, which is why I love these things so much. Next thing we're going to take a look at is the 3D Mark stress test. Uh, there we got a grade of 86.6%. Now that's a failing grade. Passing is 97%. Uh, so you probably will see some throttling as the laptop heats up and is under sustained loads. You'll see kind of a dip in performance over time, but to be honest, I didn't notice anything in the testing that we were doing with the laptop, but it will be there under extreme loads. So just keep that in mind. More expensive laptops can often cool themselves more efficiently and don't have any performance fluctuations. You might see a little bit on this one. Fan noise, though, like the others we looked at, isn't bad on here. Usually we're hearing really loud fans out of these tiny little laptops. I think because this one is much larger, uh, it's able to blow out that heat with a bigger fan. And as a result, the fan noise really isn't offensive. And uh, even having it sitting here on the desk next to me wasn't all that noticeable compared to many of the other laptops that I look at with much noisier fans. So it will keep itself cool and it won't make all that much noise doing it. But again, you might see some fluctuations in performance under uh, long periods of sustained load. Now, normally at this stage of my laptop reviews, we are running Linux and seeing how it works on the laptop. As you can see here, we are still running Windows because we couldn't get Linux to boot. And I was testing this out during a live stream where I had some of my experts in helping and there was just no way to get it going, at least uh, easily. So I think if you are a Linux person, this is probably not going to be the one for you. The Asus we looked at a couple of days ago did boot up Linux just fine. In a couple of days, we'll be looking at a Dell Ryzen laptop. We'll see how that one fares, but this one is not for the Linux folks out there. Sorry about that. Uh, no fingerprint reader, no backlit keyboard. I'm okay with that given the price point. Very pleased with the performance that we're getting out of it, but just note you only have a gig of shared video memory, which might impact some of the things that would make use of the graphics here on the laptop. If it had the two gigs, it would be a real slam dunk, but it is pretty close to that at its price point given the configuration, and you can definitely add more storage to it also down the road. So altogether, not a bad value here at all, and another great example of how really nice these low-cost Ryzen chips are for their price point. More to come during Ryzen week though, so stay tuned. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rajesh, Logic GR, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.